This NBA season has exposed quite a bit about the way we view teams and players across the board. Every season we enter the year with a certain level of expectation for every individual based on how they are generally perceived by the public, and then that perception needs to change if they either outperform or underperform to those expectations. The issue with this theory, though, is that perception oftentimes doesn't change accordingly, thus resulting in players becoming a bit overrated, and this brings us to today's video. This will be a two-part topic where we'll be going through all 30 NBA teams identifying the most overrated player from each squad. In today's video, we'll be going through the teams in the Eastern Conference, then tomorrow we'll finish things up by going through the teams in the Western Conference. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but I'd also very much appreciate now with that being said, let's begin. Going in alphabetical order, we'll start off with the Atlanta Hawks, and their most overrated player right now is DeJounte Murray. DeJounte Murray is turning out to be an example of a player who fills it up on a bad team, but can't be enough to move the needle on a team that wants to make playoff runs. He was brought in by the Atlanta Hawks to help shore up their defense and provide some elite secondary playmaking alongside Trey Young in the backcourt, but the Hawks have been trending in the wrong direction ever since his arrival. Most still view him as a lockdown defender, which is something that he has not been since his Spurs days, and overall, his reputation easily exceeds the reality of him as a player. Next is the Boston Celtics, and their most overrated player right now is Derek White. I say this as someone who definitely is well aware of how important White is to the team's success, and he plays an instrumental part in a lot of their big wins, but this year, the media were trying really hard to push for Derek White to make the All-Star game, and I'm sorry, but he is just not an All-Star. Derek White is one of the best role players in the NBA right now, because he's a highly efficient 15-point scorer who who plays smart basketball, defends hard, and typically makes the right play. He's oftentimes not even one of the first three options on the Celtics, though, and the responsibilities of a number one option will always trump that of a secondary option, no matter how good in that smaller role these players are. Next is the Brooklyn Nets, and their most overrated player right now is Mikhail Bridges. The more you hear about how the Nets organization views Bridges, the more confused you may become. They reportedly turned down several trade offers that included four first round picks plus more for him. They're adamant that they're going to build for the future with him being the one that they want leading the way. And I'm sorry, but Bridges is a great player, but he's not an all-star or someone meant to be the number one option on a team. The run that he went on at the end of last season probably tricked a few people because now he's back down to earth as a 21 point scorer who has seen his efficiency fall much closer to the league average marks now that he's forced to take more difficult shots with defenses honing in on him more and realistically on a winning team he's meant to be a second or third option. Up next is the Charlotte Hornets, and their most overrated player right now is Grant Williams. Grant Williams has been making headlines a bit lately for the fact that he runs his mouth a lot and the players around him are starting to grow pretty tired of it. His time in Dallas ended with him being traded to the Hornets because he was rubbing people the wrong way in the locker room, and his play on the court did not justify all of the antics, as the Mavericks were 8.5 points worse per 100 possessions with Williams on the court. And while he's always been a decent 3 and D wing, the positive reputation that he built in Boston hasn't quite carried over since he left. Next up is the Chicago Bulls, and their most overrated player is Zach Levine. I've discussed the Levine situation quite a few times on the channel already this year, but basically, Levine's best days are more than likely behind him, and the Bulls almost immediately began to play better as a team after Levine went down with his injury. Levine's a former All-Star who has definitely had some big scoring seasons, but he became a bit of a black hole on offense, and now he's gotten surgery officially ending his season, so I'm not sure if we'll ever see him back at that all-star level again. 
Next up is the Cleveland Cavaliers, and their most overrated player is Evan Mobley. Mobley is obviously an elite defensive talent that plays a massive role in the Cavaliers' number two ranked team defense. His strengths push him to the top of a lot of talks about the most promising young players in the league, but at least for me, it's hard to rank him as highly as others do when his weaknesses can be so overwhelming in big moments. Overall on the year, the Cavaliers are 5.4 points worse with him on the floor, Last season, his lack of a reliable offensive repertoire caused the team's offense to stagnate in the playoffs, and he really hasn't improved much at all offensively since his rookie season three years ago. Up next is the Detroit Pistons, and their most overrated player right now is Isaiah Stewart. This is the third year now that Stewart has been the team's starting center, and yet it's still hard to find the parts of his game that he's actually consistently good at. He's not a very efficient scorer for a big man, he's a subpar defender, and he's probably better suited for a smaller role off the bench somewhere. Next up is the Indiana Pacers, and their most overrated player right now is Benedict Matherin. Matherin is another player that I want to emphasize that his inclusion today is not because he's bad by any means, but he just hasn't quite reached the level that many already perceive him to be at. Matherin is a very promising young scoring talent, but he's still way too wildly inconsistent, and after starting his rookie season last year red hot, he has cooled off a lot in the last year and a half to being a modest 15 point scorer off the bench. Up next is the Miami Heat, and their most overrated player right now is Terry Rozier. When the Heat traded for Terry Rozier this season, the reaction by the masses was that the Heat just made the move that will push them over the top. But since Rozier's arrival on the Heat, we're learning that it's a lot harder to produce in a smaller role than it is for him to produce on a bad team with no expectations. Rozier's at his best when he's playing freely, creating off the dribble, but in Miami, he doesn't have the freedoms to take the kind of shots that he used to in Charlotte, and his efficiency has actually tanked a bit in his early tenure with the Heat as he learns to adjust. Next is the Milwaukee Bucks, and their most overrated player right now is Damian Lillard. This year, more than any other year, Lillard has been dominating headlines, and when the Bucks traded for him, it became official that their year was championship or bust. Dame has been one of the best scoring talents in the NBA for years, and he and the Bucks are being given the benefit of the doubt for their inconsistencies this season for good reason, but there's also a chance that Lillard's best days could be well behind him. I don't believe he was deserving of being chosen as an all-star starter this year like he was, because his shooting numbers of 42% from the field and 34% from three really aren't that inspiring right now, and his struggles on defense are also a big reason why the team as a whole is now very mediocre on that end of the floor. Up next is the New York Knicks, and their most overrated player right now is Julius Randle. The Julius Randle conundrum is a battle of two versions of him. In the regular season, Randle is a bulldozing, dominant physical force with a skillful face-up game and production worthy of being named to the All-NBA team. In the playoffs, though, the lights have consistently proven to be too bright for him, and his shooting woes have held the Knicks back. The Knicks have a squad capable of making a deep run this season in the playoffs, but Randle's question reliability makes it tough to fully buy into them. Next is the Orlando Magic, and their most overrated player is Wendell Carter Jr. Carter is now in his sixth NBA season, but he just hasn't been able to take the leap many thought that he had in him. The Magic are finally pushing for a playoff spot after a few years of rebuilding, and they really haven't missed a beat whether Carter has been on the court or not. He's missed a lot of time this year due to injury, and they're still a top 5 ranked defense capable of making noise regardless. Up next is the Philadelphia 76ers, and their most overrated player is Tobias Harris. The average basketball fan seems to think of Tobias Harris as a really good third option, but when you talk to any Sixers fans, he drives them all nuts, because the thing with Tobias is that his frustrations come in the most important situations, and that doesn't show up in the box score. His numbers on paper are fine, but in the biggest moments of big games, he makes way too many boneheaded mistakes, and his shot selection becomes so poor that it's very reasonable to believe he might just not be a winning player. 
Next is the Toronto Raptors, and their most overrated player is Emmanuel Quickly. Quickly's another player on today's list that I'm actually a big fan of, but the reason why he's the selection here is because it seems a lot of people may have jumped the gun a bit with him. When the Knicks traded him to Toronto this season, I saw a lot of discussion about how Quickly was about to emerge as an all-star type scorer now that he has more freedom in Toronto, but he's just not there yet, so we need to pump the brakes a little bit. He's been putting up about 17 points and 6 assists per game while shooting the ball very well from 3 since being traded to the Raptors, which is definitely solid but it's not all-star level solid yet. And finally, the last team in the East is the Washington Wizards, and their most overrated player is Jordan Poole. Maybe the most obvious selection in the entire video, Jordan Poole entered the season with big-time expectations, but has fallen disastrously short of them. He has somehow regressed in terms of his scoring output, despite being traded to a team that gave him a bigger role outside of the shadow of Steph Curry, and now it's gotten to the point where he's lost his spot in the starting lineup. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below who you think are the most overrated players in the league. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.